Hi, I'm David Murrell with Coldwell Banker Capital Gateway, and I'd like to an answer a question today that a lot of people ask me is, how do I become a real estate investor in California? Well, the easiest way to get your foot wet, to get started, is to take the house that you are living in right now, and presumably you want to move up. You're ready to, to buy your next home, and what you do is you don't sell that house. You actually just move into your next home. The reason that is a great way to become a real estate investor is number one, you're getting the best possible loan on the house moving forward. You're getting the best interest rate and you're getting the lowest down payment. Uh, the other big benefit to, to keeping that existing home is presumably housing prices have gone up. And so you're taking advantage of a lower tax base from when you bought that home five, six, seven, ten years ago. So your payment is lower and there, you have a better chance then of having a rental payment that more than covers your house payment. And that's the key to success. When you're investing in real estate, you want to make sure that the tenant is actually making your mortgage payment for you. And then you get to enjoy the appreciation on the house without having to shell out money every single month on this house. So that's by far the best way to get started. That's how I got started. Bought my first house in 1988 for, for $86,500, had a $700 payment on that property. And when I moved out of it 10 years later, I was only able to rent it for about $900 a month. But hey, that covered my payment. Uh, and it didn't make much sense to sell at that time because it was only worth $125,000. I'd paid $86,500. There wasn't a huge amount of equity in the property, so I kept it. Well, when I sold that house, uh, another 10 years later, so 20 years after I bought it, I sold it for 435000 and I was renting it for $1,450 a month, and I still had that locked-in payment of $700 a month. And guess what I did with that excess? I bought more rentals. So the other rentals that I bought that didn't quite cover their payment, they were covered by my first rental that did have a, a, a great cash flow on it. Uh, so that's how I got started. Um, just got my daughter started. Uh, she bought, graduated from college in 2012. Two months after graduating, I uh, got her to, to buy her very first house, and it was the house she moved into, so she got the best possible loan on it. Well, it didn't take her long to get it promoted. So she moved from Vacaville to Oakland, bought her next house, and converted her house in Vacaville to a rental. Well, the cool thing is, because rental prices have been going up so fast, she was able to move out of her house before it was, she'd even lived there two years, and uh, her rental payment would more than covered her, her house payment. So now, we're talking about a 25-year-old kid is already a landlord. Uh, she's got $250,000 in equity in that first house, too, because prices have been going up so fast. Uh, and I'm renting out her house again for her. Uh, we're, uh, we just increased the rent another $150 a month. So now she's really sitting in Fat City uh, with her very first rental, uh, getting all kinds of equity and actually now making money on the rent as well. So that's the way to get started in the, the, the rental business. Um, now, one thing I really want to make you aware of is the tax uh, consequences of owning homes. Uh, the cool thing is if you convert your primary residence to a rental, as long as you've lived in it for two of the last five years, two of the last five years, it qualifies as your primary residence. Well, guess what? There's a tremendous tax savings when you sell your primary residence. Uh, $100,000 exclusion uh, on your gain if you're single, $200,000 if you're married. So uh, there's a huge ex uh, benefit to people who, uh, who sell their primary residence, but you gotta be in that house the last two, two of the last five years in order to qualify for that. I had a customer who, who uh, called me right at the five-year threshold. We, uh, uh, we, we were able to sell it uh, a month before she had planned to, to sell it with the tenant actually in the house. Uh, and uh, uh, the, it saved her over $50,000 in taxes just because she sold it under that five-year threshold. So that's something very important for you to keep in mind when you become an investor. All right, thank you for call, uh, watching this video. Call me anytime for more information. Thank you.